Hey crafty fans, it's Alex Vanover. Welcome back to my craft room. This is a video that was previously live on my YouTube channel and I've now taken it and edited it down into a shorter, more concise version just for you. So if you hear me read someone's comment or welcome somebody to the live, now you know that's why, but otherwise this is just like any other tutorial. So let's get into it. But first, before we get started, I wanted to show you the Tumblr and kind of explain some things I talk about in this video. So the little file that we are using says, don't forget to drink your water. And it is so stinking cute. Um, but I like the way that it was formatted, it was very tall. And since there are two different sections of the Tumblr, I didn't want to cross over this little taper right here. So I kind of structured it so that the words are all together. And then we're just going to place the donuts all the way around the Tumblr. So I hope that makes sense, and if not, I'll show you guys how the file started and then what I did to it to make it um, the way that it is now and how I got it on the Tumblr. Hey guys, so I wanted to show you how I cut out this donut file and how I changed it around a little bit to make it work a little bit better for me in case you guys are new around here. So I've already downloaded this image from Creative Fabrica, so I'm just gonna insert it into my Design Space Canvas. If you need help with how to download an image, I have a separate video for that. So let me know and I will post that for you. Um, but first of all, I'm just gonna be using this left half of the design. I'm gonna be getting rid of all of this because this is most beneficial if you're using like a Nalgene water bottle that doesn't have any tapering. Since I'm using a 30 ounce tumbler that has the little, um, you know, the little tapering between the bottom and the top, so it can fit in your cup holder, but it's a little bit bigger at the top. Um, that something like this is not gonna work very easily because this is meant to be just for like a straight design, if that makes sense. So I'm gonna ungroup everything and I'm gonna get rid of all of this by just clicking and dragging a box around all of it and then pressing delete. Now, another thing that I'm gonna be doing is changing up the format of this design to work for my Tumblr a little bit. So if you can picture this, the donut forget to drink your water is gonna go at the top of the Tumblr. And then I'm just gonna place these little donuts kind of all over the place um, after I place my vinyl, if that makes any sense. And if it doesn't make sense, then hang with me. I'm gonna show you what I did. So first I'm going to drag everything off to the side. And the first thing I have to do is to get is to separate the donut from the icing. So I'm going to click ungroup and then I'm going to click and drag a box around the word donut and attach it by itself so that I have this part independent of the word donut. And then I'm going to come back and click and drag a box around the donut and move it out of the way because we'll deal with it in just a moment. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna simplify these colors. And that's just something that I tend to do because I don't like to use a bunch of different colors in a design. I'm just usually not that patient to use so many layers. So I'm gonna be using the Starcraft Deceit Rose Gold and the Hoax Hollow Purple that you got from my mystery box in this design. So I'm just gonna make these this like little paragraph here just two different colors. So I'm gonna select the donut line and then I'm gonna hold down the shift key drink your line and then oh wait we might have to do a little bit of work here hang on so this we're going to attach line by line first they're grouped but they're not attached and they have to be attached first okay so now that everything's all attached i'm going to put the donut part back i'm going to select the donut and the drink your by um just holding down the shift key to select those two lines well okay being stubborn on me. So we're going to move it out of the way. I'm just moving it straight over to the side so that the spacing stays the same. And then I might have to detach this first. Yeah, we'll go ahead and detach it. And then I'm going to click and drag a box around this part. Then I'm going to attach all of this. And I'm going to turn this to purple and I'm going to turn, leave this pink because that's going to be our rose gold. And then it's going to go together just like this. So that's pretty much set other than sizing it. So I'm going to click and drag a box around everything and I'm going to make the height 3.25 inches, which is going to take up most of the top of the tumbler.
and then see that's like five different colors i just ain't nobody got time for that i'm not gonna layer five colors just for the sprinkles and i'm gonna click attach and then i will change the colors of the sprinkles depending on the donut so that we get a little bit of variety here but this is just gonna make our life a little bit simpler another thing that i'm going to do is i'm gonna take actually let me size this first so um, I'm going to go ahead and size my larger donut. If this is 3.25 high, right? The whole thing. Yeah, it's 3.25 in height. I'm going to make this donut 2.75 high. So it's a little bit, um, it's still on the larger side, but it's not quite as large as the words. So now that that's sized, I'm going to take this background, which is like this, um, like the dough layer, I guess and I'm gonna duplicate it. And the reason I'm gonna do that is because we are actually gonna use transparent vinyl in this case. I'm just gonna turn this white um, and I'm gonna put transparent vinyl over top the whole donut so that these little sprinkles are protected. Because in case you guys have never used vinyl a lot on a, um, on a tumbler before, when you have little pieces like these sprinkles, they're not as likely to stay very long if they're gonna be hand washed. So we'll use transparent vinyl over top of our design and that will just protect the little sprinkles from getting dislodged. So I'm gonna have a second layer um, over top of everything for each donut that we make. So now I'm gonna click and drag our box around here and click duplicate. And it might take a minute because it is a lot of, a lot of little pieces here. Then I'm going to take this sprinkle layer and I'm going to turn these pink because I want to use my um, deceit pink here. So actually we need to choose a different shade of pink because this pink is probably the pink of the icing. So under advanced, we'll just find a different color. We'll scoot the little color picker here to the right just a little bit. And it doesn't really have to be like the most accurate thing ever. That really doesn't matter. We just need to be able to separate the mats so that they cut a different color. So, okay. So we're going to do, yeah, pink sprinkles here. And then I also want to put donuts around the bottom of the um, cup as well. So I'm going to click and drag a box around all of these. I'm going to duplicate it again. And those are going to go around the bottom area of the tumbler. So again, it might just take a moment. Design space just updated last night. There we go. <laughs> so we're going to hope that for the best that it works. Okay, so now I'm going to grab one of these donuts and I'm going to duplicate it. And we're going to do a little bit of a smaller donut that I can place in between some of these because I'm just going to place them after I see the placement of everything. Then I'm going to place everything by hand on the tumbler. So I don't necessarily have like a super firm plan for it. I'm just going to kind of play around with it. So I'm going to size this guy a bit smaller. If this one is a height of two and a quarter, then maybe I'll make him let's try two inches high. Yeah, so it's gonna be a really small donut, but I think we're gonna do a few more of these just so that we can fill in any space. So again, I'm gonna go down to the smaller dough layer and I'm gonna duplicate and turn it white to make sure that I have that transparent layer ready to roll. Okay, so that is a pink sprinkle um, donut. So I'm gonna duplicate it And I'm going to make about two of each type of donut. I'm just going to hope that that looks like enough. Um, so these are going to be for the top layer. So we're going to move all of these little friends down. And I guess I'm going to go and click and drag a box around all of this and duplicate again. So that's two big donuts and two small donuts on the top of the tumbler and the bottom of the tumbler. Come on, design space. You can do it. Okay. So now we're going to duplicate it again and we're going to turn our sprinkles purple. Oh, you know what? No, we're not going to duplicate them again. That's too many. <laughs> I don't know, guys. I'm just going to cut some extra and we'll just see what we use. OK, so I'm going to go in here and grab the sprinkles, turn these the darker purple. And then I'm going to turn one of each of these donuts purple too. Well, no, there's three and three. So I'll leave that. Okay. 
And I think that's going to be all of our donuts. Um, and we're just going to hope that that's enough. So we've got a ton of stuff going on here. So we're definitely going to save this project. I'm just going to call it Tumblr in case we have to come back and do anything else. And any of that, I definitely don't want to have to redo all that. <laughs> okay. So next we're going to go to make it. And it's telling me it is a large project and there's a lot of layers here. So it is large. So this is going to be our mat of transparent vinyl. These are all of our donut layers, all of our purple layers. Oh, okay. And we need to go back and fix this because these are all supposed to be the same shade of purple. So we're going to go back and it looks like it was these larger, um, sprinkles. We're going to go back and change those to the darker purple and save it again. Okay. And then we should have all of our layers in place. Now here's the dough layer. Here's the purple. Here's the pink. And here's the sprinkles. Okay. So something else we need to do is we need to go back and make the, um, donut, um, and drink your, colors. We want to make it the same as the sprinkle so we can cut it out of the star craft. And then I'm going to use a different pink for the icing of each donut. So this is why it's always good to check out your layers guys. Always good to know where you're at. Okay. <laughs> so let's save this. This is not the world's easiest project. So if you're newer to vinyl, you may want to take it easy. I just wanted to show you guys that you really can do really cute stuff with vinyl. I know sometimes it seems like it's not the most exciting thing in the world, um, but you really can do really good stuff with vinyl if you spend the time to, you know, make your designs a little fancier. So next we're going to go to continue. And as soon as our machine connects, we're going to have a ton of different cut settings. Um, but the cut settings that I'm going to use for the Starcraft magic is a glitter vinyl. And then I'm going to change it to more pressure. And that usually works best on my machine for Starcraft magic, but make sure that whenever you're working with different films, um, like anything sparkly or anything like that, that you always double check your cut settings. So again, I use glitter vinyl, more pressure for that. And then the rest of these layers, I don't know why my machine's not connecting because it's on over there. But either way, um, I'm not going to show you guys this part, I guess, if my machine decides it won't connect. But for this layer, for this layer, and for this layer, I'm going to be using StarCraft HD, and I just use the regular vinyl setting for that. So those are the settings I'm going to be using for this project, and I'll meet you guys back over at the live and show you how to put it all together. So the next thing I'm going to do is just take some rubbing alcohol, which is in this massive spray bottle, <laughs> and rub it on a, or spray it on a paper towel and rub it on my tumbler to make sure that my tumbler is nice and clean. Maybe I have to tip it up like this. I want to make sure that my tumbler is nice and clean before I, well, maybe I think my little, I think the little sprayer guy was like stuck in the side. Hopefully this will work. Um, but I want to wipe off the tumbler and make sure that it's clean before I add any vinyl. Of course it's not going to work. So what I'm just going to have to do is use it just like I would the alcohol bottle and just add it straight to my paper towel. Well, you're welcome, LaShonda. I'm glad that it was helpful for you guys, especially I know that it's still kind of newbie season. So for a lot of you newbies, if you haven't been designing a design space long, it can be a little bit complicated. So I'm just going to wipe all the way around the tumbler and then we'll get to weeding all of these designs. Okay, so first I'm actually going to weed the transparent vinyl and hopefully you guys heard that part of the screen capture that I did for you all. Um, and the reason we're going to be using transparent vinyl is because we're going to have really little tiny sprinkles that um, are going to be over top of the donuts. And whenever you have something you're going to be hand washing a lot, typically that stuff's not going to stick around very long unless it's either sealed or covered with transparent vinyl or clear vinyl. A lot of people ask what to do with clear vinyl and this is my personal favorite way to use it. I honestly don't use it super often, but it is really useful for stuff like this. So I know you guys probably can't see me weed any of that, but I just wanted to, this will be a super quick one because then we just have to pull out the centers of the little donuts.
So typically I would recommend that you guys do all of your layering on your actual project. But in this case, um, we're actually going to be doing the layering before we apply the vinyl to the tumbler because I want to make sure that I get the donuts exactly how I want them before I get started. A um, Markia, that's interesting because a lot of times people don't really notice it because it's not something you'd think you'd ever want to use. But if you get like, say, an all an all pack of 143 Vinyls um, StarCraft HD, you'll get something like clear. And this is a great way to use it. Oh, guys, the circle never left. <laughs> I just dropped it back down in the middle. That's too funny. OK, so that's done. So now we are going to get to the sprinkles and the StarCraft Magic. And I wanted to tell you guys what I ended up having to do with the StarCraft Magic when I cut it. So these are the two colors that we're going to use today. This is the Hoax Hollow Purple and the Deceit Rose Gold. And a really common question um, that I get a lot of the time is what's the difference between StarCraft Deceit? Yes, exactly, Susan. Happy birthday, Olivia. Um, is what's the difference between Deceit and Hoax Hollow in StarCraft Magic. And so as you guys can see, when I hold them up to the light, the Hoax Hollow has much bigger um, flakes, if you will, and Deceit has much smaller, finer flakes. So neither of them is really any different. It's just kind of a preference thing for you guys. I wanted you guys to have a sheet of each when I chose my mystery box, but um, now you can see the difference side by side. Oh, of course. <laughs> no worries, Kayla. So, so you'll see that I cut a couple of stars out of my StarCraft Magic. It's so funny that I was telling you guys um, <laughs> in the video that you needed to do a test cut. Well, joke's on me because I did not do a test cut before I cut the first section of my Purple Hoax Holographic and the pressure was not even close to enough. So I ended up having to do two more test cuts and find the right setting. The setting I ended up using was the um, Patterned Ironed On, which is a really weird setting, um, but it, I was using the pressure numbers in case you guys are not familiar with those. I have a video on how to do the perfect pressure settings, which is super helpful if you don't know how to do test cuts or adjust if you don't know how to adjust your cut settings so definitely check that video out if you don't know how to do that but I wanted to show you guys that because as I was telling you to do test cuts I did not even follow my own rules and then I had to do more test cuts so anyway we'll set these aside and I'll go ahead and weed these pieces I'm also going to go ahead and cut them apart because I find them easier to weed when they're not all together anyways but also because we're going to be using the parchment paper method to to layer today and that is easiest if we do it piece by piece and I find this so hard to see when I'm cutting it apart so I always have to hold it up to the light the thing that I have found works best with um, with holographic films like this that are really hard to see the key is actually overhead light I know a lot of people try and use like um, light pads and all that stuff and that stuff can be helpful but um, I find overhead light is actually more helpful and I, I might leave those there because we're going to have to weed all in one big strip because I don't know where the sprinkles are for each donut. <laughs> so it's not always the easiest thing to weed, but I promise it's so worth it. So that's why it's really important to get a really good cut setting that works really well with this type of vinyl because otherwise it's really, really difficult to weed. So as you guys can see, it's coming off super easily. And I might have to coax a few pieces off of the vinyl, but at least, you know, it's not going to be quite as difficult with a good pressure setting. When I first started weeding it and I could not get anything off of the, the backing, I was like, oh, no, no, we are not going to do this because it will take me forever. So I recut it, like I said, on the patterned iron on setting. But let me know if you guys want to see that video um, that has the um, instructions for how to make your own cut settings and how to adjust your pressure settings because that will make your life so much easier if you've never done that before. Because every machine's a little bit different so you always wanna make sure that you're prepared to adjust. 
your cut setting just based on like your blade and um, the vinyl. And even I was considering doing a Tesca anyway, and I should have, because Cricut Design Space did some maintenance last night, and I wanted to make sure that the pressure settings hadn't changed. I've noticed that sometimes my settings are not as accurate after an update like that, so I really should have done this before I wasted vinyl, but hey, that's okay. So I'm just checking to make sure that I didn't miss any sprinkles, and it doesn't look like I did. All right. <laughs> I agree, Kayla. It is a pain to find the settings. I won't even lie to you guys. It is definitely a pain, but it is worth it because it's super pretty and it makes such, it has such a pretty effect that it's totally worth the time spent. Um, but that's why test cuts are great because they keep you from wasting a ton of your material. Okay, so those are our pink sprinkles. All right. Mackie said, I just cut some yesterday for some jars I made <laughs> and it cut through, but it was not easy weeding. Agreed, Mackie. And you can totally still do it when it's not an easy thing to weed. I just usually give up and recut it mostly because I just, I don't like to weed. I don't know if you guys have been around here long and I know so many of you love it and no, no shade to those of you who love it. I do not love weeding and I get easily frustrated. So I just recut. <laughs> That's just how I roll. Oh, yeah, an overhead light from Walmart. Agreed, agreed. Yeah, and you know what? <laughs> Even though I am young, I do not have very good eyes either, so it is much easier to get this done when you have um, good lighting. And, of course, my vinyl wants to grab the paper backing, so we'll try this side. There we go. All right, we're getting somewhere, folks. This actually went a little faster than I thought it would. I thought the weeding would take a lot longer. The pin pen is super helpful and I also did link all of my tools down in the description, but the weeding tool is much easier to use than anything else I've ever weeded with. <laughs> Kayla says she has six pin pens and currently can find one. So I keep all of my stuff in one of these tool holders from 143 Vinyl, and that is how I always know where everything is. I have a few extras too that I have stashed in a drawer, but I keep basically two full sets of weeding tools in my tool holder at all times, basically. So let's look back through our vinyl and see if we missed anything. Okay, so now we've got all of our parts sorted. And so next we're gonna go ahead and put all of our decals together. So let's see, we'll start with the background of the brown donuts that are gonna be our chocolate donuts today. And I guess we'll, I'll just go ahead and cut them apart so that I can go ahead and layer everything. And then once everything is layered, then we'll go ahead and apply it to the cup. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna cut these apart and then I change my mind. We're gonna start with by putting the saying on the tumbler and then we can go back and do all of the donuts. Because the saying, whoops, I cut off. 
that a little bit there, but that's okay. Um, the saying is the most important part of the donut, so we're or, uh, most important part of the donut. Listen to me, y'all. <laughs> The saying is the most important part of the tumbler, so I want to give that precedence as far as like the placing and everything, and then we'll place all the donuts based on where the saying goes. All right. This is going to be a longer project, and I also meant to mention, guys, that this is not the world's easiest project, so if you're newer to vinyl, you may not want to take on something this ambitious. I just wanted to prove to you guys that you can still do really cool tumblers without necessarily doing epoxy, because a lot of people feel that they need to get in with epoxy so that they can make like really neat tumblers, but you can still do a lot of really cool stuff even with vinyl. There's definitely nothing wrong with that. So I'm not gonna go ahead and layer, I'm gonna go ahead and layer these when I get them on the cup. I'm just trying to get an idea of like the spacing here. So I wanna put the donut part pretty high up, but I don't quite wanna put it right up on the lip just so that I don't drink over top of it. And I don't drink over top my vinyl when I have um, vinyl on my tumblers. I just turn my lid to another spot and I don't drink right over top of it and put my lips on it. I don't know that it's necessarily, like it's not recommended for sure. You don't wanna put your mouth on vinyl if you can help it. Um, I don't know necessarily that it's dangerous, but it's just not something that I really think is a good idea. So that's how I handle it as far as like it being safe. I just don't drink over top of it. So we're gonna put the donut layer down first, of course, because that is the most important part of the saying. And then we're gonna cut this part off and I'll just reuse this transfer tape for the other part. Whoops, these little scissors. <laughs> I need to get better mini scissors. These guys are old, super dull. All right. So I'm gonna cut off this half of it because I don't need that. And I'm gonna use my squeegee. And put this guy down. All right. So I'm gonna show you guys my favorite. Oh, okay, LaShawna uses the Cricut Explorer. Okay, so I'm gonna show you guys my favorite way to apply decals um, anytime you're using adhesive vinyl. So the way that I do it is I like to hold it in my fingers and I kind of bend it in this U shape, except it's pointed toward, down toward the, like the item itself, but you won't be able to see it, so I'm gonna show you from the side. And the way that I like to do it is I like to stick it down in the center where I want it, and then I let down one side and then the other. And that tends to give me a good centered design. I don't get as many bubbles this way. Um, just makes it a little bit easier for for me. LaShawna said, I consider myself a baby in this world. I'm learning everything I've never done. Any and all this is new and fun and somewhat overwhelming. I completely understand LaShawna, exactly. It's like so exciting and so much fun, but also you're like, holy crap, I cannot comprehend everything everyone is telling me. Just take it a project at a time because it is seriously, it is a lot, but it's a lot of fun. And once you start one thing, you'll love it for a while. And then, you know, you'll want to switch over to something else. And then you'll have so many ideas for what to do next and it'll be great. So now we're gonna do our next layer. And as you guys saw, another reason why I love this transfer tape is because I am able to reuse it for a few layers, which is always really, really nice. You don't get quite as much waste this way. Like I said, my spacing is not the most even, but that's okay. It's gonna work great. <laughs> All right, so our saying is on there and look how sparkly it is. Ah, it's just so pretty.
So now I'm gonna work on each of these donuts. And like I said, I typically would recommend that you go ahead and um, center your, um, and go ahead and layer on your design. But since I have three different layers of each donut, I don't want to mess it up. Um, like I don't want to put it on and then not layer it the way that I want it to. So I'm going to do the layering first in this case. I teach the way that I do, but the reality is, is I want you guys to just really have fun with it, honestly. All right. So here's all of our little icing and our big icing. And we'll just get started. We're just gonna lay down a bunch of these on the transfer tape. Oh, thank you, LaShawna. I'm so glad that I was able to help. I'm happy, happy, happy to help you guys. That's what I love to do the most. Catherine says, Alex, would you put transparent vinyl over the words too or just the small sprinkles layer? So I'm only gonna worry about it for the sprinkles, Catherine. I'm not gonna worry about it for the words because the words are gonna be fine. They're not a super thin font or anything like that. So there's really nothing to worry about there. We're just gonna put it over the sprinkles. And I know that you guys couldn't see the transparent layer because when I weeded it, it just looks clear, but it's actually just the exact same shape as this donut. Whoops, hold on. <laughs> There we go. So it's just the exact same shape as this donut. I just duplicated this layer for everything and that way it just seals in the sprinkles. Okay, so we'll start with this chocolate layer. I'm just gonna peel the backing off of the pink and we're just going to layer it the best that we can luckily this hole in the center makes it really really easy to line up and i'll just stick it right there now we may get the transfer tape sticking to the vinyl a little bit so that's a possibility but we're just going to try to do our best okay and now we'll go ahead and just grab some sprinkles while we're at it and do the sprinkles too So since this transfer tape's not quite as sticky, I'm gonna flip it over and burnish it a little bit, just like this. And we may have some problems picking up these sprinkles now that I see this. With this transfer tape not being quite as sticky, it might not wanna grab this little bit thicker vinyl, but we will make it work. All right, there we go. Perfect. So we'll go ahead and just put the sprinkles on top, just like that. Super, super simple and easy. That way there's no layering left to be done. You guys, look how cute this donut is. So fun and I just love that sparkle.
So we've got our four big donuts on here. So let's go ahead and start placing them around the tumbler. Let's see. I'm kind of thinking about doing, you know what guys, it's so funny. I even brought parchment paper up here to do the parchment paper layering method and I didn't even end up using it. <laughs> I guess I feel like I didn't really need it. Okay, so I'm kind of thinking maybe placing the donuts like a third of the way around so that it's like here and then I'll do a pink one here yeah, I'll put one like right there. All right, guys, here's the first donut. And so here's a really important piece of applying vinyl. So vinyl is pressure sensitive, which means that once you activate the adhesive or the way that you activate the adhesive is actually with pressure. And that's why the squeegee is so beneficial. So when you go to do your final application, you want to give it um, a pretty good burnish with your squeegee. And you want to be pretty careful not to give it too much of a burnish until you're ready to place it on the final surface because you can actually activate the adhesive before you're ready. And um, it can actually stick it to the backing before you mean to. So make sure that you give it a good burnish. And there we go. So we can see a little bit of not necessarily bubbling, but a little bit of like of a gap with the transparent vinyl over top the sprinkles, but it still looks super sparkly. You guys can kind of see it in the light there. It still looks super sparkly and in the long run, it's gonna last a lot longer. So I'm okay with that showing through, but that is kind of a, that is a little con of using permanent or transparent vinyl over top of your vinyl. So we've got one donut here. So I'll try to place the next one kind of in the middle back here. Oh, and I don't know, I didn't say this out loud, but I was using my squeegee as something to hang on to my tumbler here. That's a fun little trick in case you guys have never done that before. It helps hold your tumbler in place. So we've got a couple of donuts on there and we've got our little saying. So let's go ahead and do some smaller donuts and then um, we'll place those too. I used the clear HD because I had some and I knew that I wanted to use it at some point. The star la la la, is that how you say your name? Wants to know if this process would work on a glass candle jar. Absolutely. This would be perfect for a glass candle jar. Um, vinyl sticks best to surfaces like glass. Anything that is smooth and non-porous is what vinyl sticks best to. You can go a little bit outside of that if you want to um, use some different techniques to apply it. But things like stainless steel, glass, um, surfaces like that are actually ideal for vinyl. And these guys are super small, so these definitely need something over top of them if they're going to stay long-term, whether that's UV laminate or um, transparent vinyl or something. And you know, this is where one of those things where when we start talking about like the limits of vinyl, you know, you just wanna be cognizant of the limits of the material that you're working with. And these little pieces are so tiny that hand washing them is gonna be really, really intense for them. And that's why the layer is necessary. When you look at that, that's just really a small piece and there's not a lot of adhesive for um, it to even use to stick with. And that's why it needs extra special protection. 
I think sometimes we have a little bit of high expectations, especially if you're new and you haven't worked with vinyl a lot, you think you're going to be able to make everything under the sun. And though you can, I'm sure that there's a way, you know, it sometimes takes a little bit of working with so that you make sure that you make it the best way that you can in a way that's actually going to stay long term. So we'll add that little transparent layer that I know y'all can't see. <laughs> and then we will be done with this little donut. So if you're having trouble with layering, parchment paper is going to change your life. It makes it so much easier. You just need a little tiny piece. There's transfer tape stuck to my arm. We're just gonna cut off just enough to layer a small piece of vinyl. When you take your donut, you can actually move the icing around and you can still see through the parchment paper. So you can actually move the um, piece, like the layer around until you get it where you want it. And then what you can do is you can take your um, transfer tape and kind of stick it down, bend it back and remove the parchment paper. And then you layer perfectly every single time. But I just wanted to make sure that you guys had seen that method in case you ever feel like you, you know, want to try it or anything like that. But that's okay, we'll go ahead and place some more donuts just for fun. So let's place another one right here underneath this um, decal. So, oh good, you guys are digging it, very good. Okay, so I'm gonna use the little donut that I just made. I'm gonna place it right here. I'm going to do another one with purple sprinkles. I didn't mean to do two with pink sprinkles in a row. So I'll probably make another mini donut and place it next. So that is my last little donut, you guys. I just love how this turned out. I don't know how well you can see that in the light there, but it says, don't forget to drink your water. 
and it's just got fun little donuts placed all the way around. So if you are new here and if you have not made tumblers before, you definitely wanna let your tumb tumblers cure before you use them, which literally just means you wanna let it sit um, like on the on the counter or something without getting wet for 24 to 48 hours. And that's gonna allow the adhesive on the vinyl to really um, take to the surface and it's gonna be a lot stronger after you do that. So you definitely wanna do that if you have time and if you are able to, because it just makes a really big difference in the longevity. So that's what it looks like from here. So hopefully I will remember to drink my water and do a better job. I know that this is 32 ounces, which makes, or I think it's 30 ounces, 30 ounces. So that makes it a lot easier to, um, to keep track of how much water I'm drinking because I track my water every day, but I've been slacking on the job lately. So hopefully this will help. What did you think of this project? I would love to hear your thoughts down in the comments. If you haven't already joined one of my crafty fans on Facebook, then I would love to have you be a part of them. So I'll be sure to link both of my Facebook groups down in the description. And since you've made it this far in the video, then I would love to get to know you on social media. So please be sure to find me at DIY Alex Vanover on pretty much all major social media platforms. And I'll be sure to put direct links to all my profiles down in the description below. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more just like it, then be sure to subscribe to the DIY Alex YouTube channel and be sure to ring the bell so that you get notified every single time that I put out a new video every single week. But don't wait for next week's video. Be sure to check out this one next. Or if you want to make your DIY dreams come true, be sure to check out this video. I know that you're going to love it.